I want to tell you a bit about the life cycle of the wild Atlantic salmon and the impact that a changing climate is already having on this iconic species and how it ties in with the Arctic. I'll tell you a little bit about NASCO, my organization, and the role it plays in the conservation of wild Atlantic salmon. Colin's already told you salmon is an iconic species. It's highly prized as a food and recreational fishing resource and by the general public. It's surrounded by folklore where it plays a role in the cultural heritage and ceremonies of indigenous peoples. It's an indicator of a healthy freshwater environment. It's of economic value both to fishermen and others connected to the fishing and angling industries. Salmon is what is known as an anadromous species. This means it migrates from freshwater to the ocean and back to freshwater to complete its life cycle. The young fish can spend up to four years in the rivers in which they're born before they migrate, migrate out of the freshwater environment and into the open ocean. And here they feed and mature for up to four years before returning to the river where they were born, where they spawn. Climate change, therefore, has the opportunity to impact them twice. Once during the freshwater phase, where the development from the egg to smolt is temperature dependent, and then again in the open ocean, where they are a part of the pelagic fish community that Goodman has always already told us about. Now, some 2,500 salmon rivers drain into the North Atlantic. In the Northeast Atlantic, salmon spawn from the Barents Sea and the White Sea, right up here, right down to Portugal. In the Northwest Atlantic, they spawn in rivers from Labrador, up here, down to, where have we gone? Connecticut. There are some salmon rivers in Iceland. There's even a salmon river in Greenland. And salmon could already be considered as an Arctic species, given that several spawning populations are found above the Arctic Circle in Norwegian and Russian rivers. So, oops, sorry. So here's the Arctic Circle and a lot of Norway and Russia. And recent electronic tagging has also shown that the larger adult salmon can migrate to the very edge of the Arctic ice sheets during their feeding migration. The migratory route of salmon in the open ocean is different for different populations and for differently aged fish within those populations. Some fish stay at sea for more than one year before returning to spawn, others return after one year at sea. Some of the salmon will die after spawning, others will return to the ocean for another year's growth and only about 5% of those fish will return to survive to spawn a second time. And you can see the scale of the migrations of the salmon. Now, salmon, Atlantic salmon is the only fish species to have an international convention devoted to it. The Convention for the Conservation of Salmon in the North Atlantic Ocean was, uh, came into force in October 83, and it's applicable to salmon stocks that migrate beyond areas of fisheries ju jurisdiction in the coastal states and in most areas beyond 12 nautical miles from their baselines. And the convention established the North Atlantic Salmon Conservation Organization, NASCO, in 1984. And this provided a new intergovernmental forum for cooperation on the conservation, restoration, enhancement, and rational management of wild Atlantic salmon stocks. NASCO has worked with the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea since its inception. And ICES provides advice on a number of core elements, but in addition to providing its core advice, ICES also advises on significant new or emerging threats to or opportunities for salmon conservation and management. Additionally, in 2001, the Council of NASCO established the International Atlantic Salmon Research Board and this, is, this has been running a major program of research at sea since 2007. And it has a number of current priorities, which are taking forward a program of research developing from um, a program that ran from 2007. Now, it's very easy to think that salmon is abundant. You see it everywhere in the shops. However, this is only due to the very high production levels of farmed salmon, around two and a quarter million tons in 2016. And this resulted in an abundance, this results in an abundance of farm salmon that are available to consumers. In contrast, the reported nominal catch of wild Atlantic salmon in the North Atlantic was in the order of 0.05% of 
of the worldwide production of farmed Atlantic salmon in 2016. And wild Atlantic salmon are in decline across much of their range. Of the around 2,500 rivers that drain into the North Atlantic, around 700 of these rivers have already lost their stocks entirely or are known to have endangered stocks. And the reasons for the decline are complex and not yet fully understood. So information provided by ICES has indicated that the total abundance of salmon prior to any fisheries at sea, known as PFA, has declined significantly from around 9 million fish in the, in the 1970s to around 3 million fish in recent years. And there are declines mostly in fish that spend more than one winter at sea and for salmon in the southern part of the species range. In fact, in the US and parts of Canada, salmon has been declared an endangered species. And the earlier decades in this period may well have represented a period of particularly high ocean productivity, but the scale and the speed of the decline in ocean abundance of Atlantic salmon is of concern. At a river level, some continuously monitored systems in Scotland and in Ireland have seen the survival of smolts dropped from smolts to adults drop from an average of 15% to less than 10%. And in recent years, they've dipped, it's dipped to 5% at times. This means that these rivers are losing 95% of their output. And this loss is unprecedented and indicates ocean-wide changes which are impairing the smolt's ability to feed and grow at sea. Salmon are thought to have been around for at least 20 million years, and they have encountered immense challenges over that time and adapted very effectively to deal with them. However, such adaptation takes time, and we have no idea how long it took for the past adaptations to take effect. In 2016, NASCO requested ICES to provide the description of the potential future impacts of climate change on salmon stock dynamics. And a workshop was held in early 2017 uh, and provided its results, reported back to NASCO. And it reported um, in a number of areas. Overall, global warming is a major driver on a wide range of factors, influencing not only the Atlantic salmon's life cycle, but certainly impacting on the Atlantic salmon's life cycle. In fresh water, this can cause lethal increases in temperature. But because of the huge geographic range across which salmon are found, in other areas, it may actually uh, increase growth and increase small production. It may lead to changes in marine survival and ultimately to the success of individual salmon stocks. It may lead to a mismatch between the freshwater and marine temperatures at the time of migration. Thinking about the Arctic, it could lead into facilitate population expansion into habitats that until recently were below the minimum temperature requirements for salmon. And I was talking with a Canadian scientist last week who tells me that they're now seeing Atlantic salmon moving up into the high Arctic. They've been found in some rivers in the high Arctic recently. Changing weather patterns also impact on freshwater. There's been increases in the number and magnitude of extreme weather events in recent years. These can lead to extreme flooding or extreme drought, and they both have a significant impact on entire year classes of juveniles, potentially. In the marine environment, the effects of rising water temperatures are also not uniform across stocks. Some stocks appear to be increasing, experiencing increases in marine survival, but many others are, increasing, uh, are having a decreased marine survival. Changes in food webs have altered prey availability. And continued low marine survival appears very likely in many of the stocks, something that has been observed, as I showed you, since the mid-1990s. As a species as a whole, then, it's extremely unlikely that Atlantic salmon will become globally extinct within the next 100 years. But it is very likely that some populations will suffer significant reductions in abundance, especially towards the southern extreme of the range. The southern extremes of the range have already moved about two, about, uh, two degrees northwards. So there's, there's change going on already. Towards the northern end of the distribution, range expansion might occur. It probably will occur, as will a general increase in productivity of many of the stocks. But the loss of these southern stocks can mean the loss of very unique genetic types altering genetic structure 
and future evolutionary potential. Thank you.